talking about summation notation. Okay, summation notation is kind of just a convenient way to write a bunch of things added up. This is especially convenient for calculus and specifically when we start talking about integrals and definite integrals because that's really what definite integrals are is summing up or adding up a whole bunch of things. So you, the way we use this summation notation as you use this capital sideways M, this is a capital Greek letter sigma for sum. And the way you read this is the sum from I equals one to N. And I is what's called the index. Okay, and it doesn't really matter. I could have used K here and all of these would be Ks. Um, but usually you see like I or K or J or something like that. And what you're summing up is this thing and it says a sub i, so it's indexed by i. And what that would mean, what this thing represents, would be a of 1 plus a of 2 plus a of 3, whatever these values happen to be, plus all the way plus up to n. So I go through all the integers from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up however many high, however high n is. So this is a general example. Let me show you a more specific example. So I'm going to do the sum from i equals 1 to 4 of just i. So all that means is for my first value, I'm substituting 1. So that's 1 plus, now I substitute my second value, which is 2. And then I substitute my third value, which is 3. And then I substitute my fourth value, which is 4. And now I'm done. Okay, I've, I've done 1, I've done 2, I've done 3, and I've done 4. And since it's just I, I'm just summing the numbers from 1 to 4. And I think that's going to be 7, 9, 11. Does that sound right? 7, 9, 11, I think so. Cool. Okay. Well... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say that didn't seem right to me. I think that's 10. 7, 9, 10. Yeah, sorry. Well, anyway, so that's a very basic example. So let me show you another example. If I wanted to sum up i equals 1 to 5 of, and this time I'm going to do i squared. All right. Well, that would be 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared, which is 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 equals, I'm not even going to do it, but you could plug that into a calculator. Or you could work that out by hand if you really wanted to. And that's more or less how you use summation notation. Um, there's a few properties. So... If I have i equals 1 to n of a constant times something, and this constant does not have any index associated with it. So basically, if I me plugging in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to n in this, c doesn't change, I can just pull out that c out front. So these are completely equivalent statements. Uh, you're basically just factoring out this c from each term. Also, if I have the sum of two different things, ai plus bi, well, I can sum ai and then add on bi. And that sort of makes sense, right? If I have the sum of two things added, that's the added of two things summed. So those don't come up a lot with summation notation. You will use these properties once you start doing integration. That's where these really come up. Just a few more things that I want to mention um, that you might end up using. There's a few reduction formulas or easy formulas that you might see. So if I have the sum of 1 to n of just i, that is n times n plus 1 over 
too. And I'm more than happy to prove that for you, but not in this video. You don't really need the proof, you just need to know the formula. Sometimes you'll use this when you're computing definite integrals using the definition of the definite integral. So for example, if I had the sum of i equals 1 to, mm, let's pick something easy, 10, I could do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 all the way up to 10, but why not just use this formula? That's 10 times 10 plus 1 over 2. That's 10 times 11 over 2. 10 over 2 is 5 times 11 is 55. So that's a really quick way to do that. And it's a really handy formula, especially when you're doing the definite integrals calculation. There's another one that you might see. It's the sum of i equals 1 to n of i squared. And it's pretty similar. It's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 2. Or I'm sorry, it's over 6. So it's a little, a little bit different, but kind of the same. Uh, this one, again, doesn't come up as much, but it might come up when you're doing uh, the definition of the definite integral. And I'll do just one more for you. If you're summing i cubed, then that's n times n plus 1 over 2 squared. So it's the exact same formula as the sum of just i, but I square the whole thing. There's your introduction to summation notation. You'll be using this for um, doing definite integral definitions. And you'll also be using this notation when you're doing what's called Riemann sums, which is an approximation for the area under the curve. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Please like and subscribe and have a great day.